Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levis. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm heading to the Ducks Unlimited Roadkill Cook-Off. There were cook teams from all over the state of Louisiana, and they had to cook with meat that can be harvested from the wild. We had a hell of a time, and I went through and picked my personal favorites. Now let's get it started. All right, y'all, we're doing something a little different today, but it still ties into things from outside the levees. We're actually at the Ducks Unlimited Roadkill Cook-Off. Now, normally they do this at the Louisiana Ducks Unlimited State Convention, but this year the national convention happens to be in New Orleans. So we've got people from all over the world who are involved in Ducks Unlimited here in New Orleans this week, and they're doing all sorts of business-related things for Ducks Unlimited, but also getting to experience New Orleans, Louisiana, and all the things that we have to offer. So this event, the Roadkill Cook-Off, is a competition and the rule is whatever you cook has to be something from the wild. It has to have a season on it. So we're gonna have things like alligator, oyster, shrimp. Uh, we'll see, maybe there even will be some duck. Who knows? But we're gonna sample a little bit of everything. I got Jack here with me today. We're gonna be filming, talking to our friends from Ducks Unlimited and really just having a good time. And man, it smells good. I can't wait to show everything they're cooking. What's up? What you think is gonna be good? Chicken. Chicken? Yeah? What about alligator? Uh, I don't know. No? I don't know. The dish for the day is ceviche, scallops and uh, shrimp. Scallops from the east coast of Canada. Yeah, and shrimp from Louisiana. Fresh shrimp. We already did this to 40 pounds of scallops. Oh yeah? They're in the cooler there, and now we're doing some shrimp. There's all the scallops. Okay. Caught last week. How about that? How'd y'all get them down? On the plane. Come on. Yeah. They wow. saw the Statue of Liberty and everything. There you go, boys. So what's the what's the trick to catching scallops? How do you do that? Nah, uh, I paid the fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Film a hook. Yeah. I got it. Cool, man. Jack, this week. Alright, so this one here is a shrimp and scallop ceviche. Now the scallops he just brought down from Canada. They're fresh caught from the fishermen last week. The shrimp are Louisiana shrimp, so that's their little connection. You gotta give them props for that. I'm personally looking forward to that one. Like, I like the idea of fresh fruit, ceviche. That's, that sounds pretty good, man. That sounds refreshing, it's hot outside. So I'm excited to see how they get this one going. Slot L chapter, we're gonna be doing charbroiled oysters. Now I noticed y'all aren't cooking yet. Y'all are gonna kind of wait and hit it with them real fresh. We want them nice and hot. Get them ready. Y'all have a system that y'all like to use to get those oysters going? Not yet. We, we would prefer to do them on a half shell like this, but under the time constraint and the circumstances, we're gonna have to use the metal uh, tray. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. We serve them on the shell like this. Right, right. Because we'd have to have somebody shucking enough to serve uh, about 400 people. So. Uh, we're gonna do them on the tin, the oyster tin, but we put this out because this is what they're gonna look like. So I've had them on the tin before. I kind of like them that way. Like, it's a really efficient way to do it, and they're good. Like, I, I, I'll, I'm with it. Yeah, they're I'm gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I don't it's think fast. the crowd's gonna be disappointed. No, we're ready. Right, right. Where I'm David Bertrand, owner of Shucks Restaurant in Abbeville, Louisiana. And we are doing a DU Creamy Oyster Stew, Oyster Rockefeller Stew, actually. And this, these are the oysters being cooked down in the stew. We will get them out once they're cooked, and then we'll get uh, our Rockefeller sauce, which is sautéed spinach. We'll get that together. It's all cooked down in... Um, with uh, pork bellies, and we'll finish them off with a fried oyster on top, crumbled bacon on top of the fried oyster. So, if we don't get it right this time, shame on us. What is that? That is almost churned butter. Smells So we got a roasted poblano, roasted corn, and shrimp bisque. Once we get this going, we're gonna get our vegetables in there, stem them down, and then we're gonna start our butter roux. Oh, what y'all got here, man? Oh, we got some jambalaya. 
We got some Pecan Island Jambalaya. Pecan Island. Oh yeah. We got we got us some uh, Nutra rat in there. Okay. Some uh, some armadillo. A little possum meat. Thing. That right there is the pot. There's the nutrient. There's the armadillo, right? Yeah, that's right. So what's the trick to doing your jambalaya in a big in a big pot like this? What do you Man, do? The, 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 the secret the secret is having your meat well seasoned before and just building the flavors when you put it together. So right now what we're doing is we're browning the meat real good and we're incorporating that uh, it is we have we have we have pork and chicken in here. And uh, smoked sausage, so that so we're letting that that meat brown and getting some of that smoke flavor in, into that meat. And it's all seasoned, and then we'll add our other ingredients, our vegetables, our base, our liquid, all that stuff. The secret is to the timing of how you cook it and letting it steam real well, and, and just incorporating all the flavors together. How long has that meat been seasoned for? You said that was one of the uh, th this meat was seasoned yesterday. Oh wow! So 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 it's been seasoned for about 24 hours. I love it. You got it flowing. <laughs> oh yeah. I had to blend in. Uh, I'm the only one from the UL chapter, so um, I had to fit in with the rest of the dads, so this is my dad fit. This is my dad fit, got the high socks, cargo shorts on, your oversized button down. Now look, when the weather comes out, you just gotta hit the stance of the leg spread a little bit from shoulder width apart. Sit you stare, you hit him with the... Ready for action at all times. Oh, always gotta watch the weather. It's a dad thing. Dad rule number one, always watch the weather. We went to Monroe chapter. And the Alexandria chapter. And Alexandria chapter, and we got a chicken truck that fell over on the side of the road up in Farmable. And we got all the chickens, and so far we ain't had nothing bruised too bad. None of them crossed the road. Yeah, none of them got across the road. Yeah, I mean, there's roadkill chicken. Oh, no, we got some... <laughs> see, how I, like see how I spell D-U? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You're the man. What you got, bro? You're the man. Yeah. Wow. How many gallons in here? Uh, that is probably about a 50-gallon pot. It'll hold 425 pounds of crawfish at one time, 400 pounds of shrimp, same with crabs. It don't take long to boil. Probably about 15 minutes because of the amount of water they got in here right now. All right, now one thing y'all need to know about Jack, which y'all probably seen, he loves boiled seafood. I think you're gonna love the boiled shrimp, huh, Dad? That's gonna be boiled shrimp. I think that's gonna be your favorite, huh? That man loves some boiled seafood. So. All right, you ready? Go see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? Look at him, Dad. Later. What you think about that, man? It's good. <laughs> that smells good, don't it? All right, so tell us what we did so far. So we got our we got our butter going. We got our vegetable sautéing right now. We're about to put our flour in and get our butter roux. Then we're gonna start putting our uh, the rest of our ingredients. The shrimp is the last part, but not necessarily the least important part. We season them with some blackened seasoning. We got them marinating right now. It's getting right. Getting right. It's getting right. You gotta. You want those oysters to be nice and plump. I'll show you over here. Plenty of stuff to do. Let's get a little cayenne in there. The importance is that you don't use too much. Because right. nothing we do, nothing we do is one dimensional. We don't have any dish on the menu that's one dimensionally hot, right. salty, anything. We want the, the flavors to be blended so well that you can't tell what's in it and what's not. That's the secret. All right, so this is not the, the finished complete product. This is more or less a taste test. That's three quarters of the way home. I like the bacon. Like That's bacon. a nice touch. Thank you. The bacon's a nice, all right, so I got andouille on this bite. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, so when we try this again, it's gonna have a fried oyster on top. And I'm hoping Jack will actually eat a fried oyster. We'll see. Yes, sir. Yum. Good? It's good. All right, here. All right, so this is the juice that they're boiling those shrimp in. I'm probably making a mistake here. Let's see. That's actually perfect. That's perfect. Just enough. Yeah, that's just enough. All right, so they're gonna be dropping the shrimp soon. All right, so I just walked up. This is my buddy Andy Johnston, y'all. Andy, y'all need any type of boat work done in New Orleans area? Hit him up, the boat doctor. He's been. How long y'all been doing it? Oh, 28 years. 28 years, outboards and mud motors. Yes, sir. So if you got boat problems, which you know, people like me, we can get boat problems. It happens. Go see him, the boat doctor. You're in Harahan, right? Yep. In Harahan, the boat doctor. Look him up. But I walked up just now, and they said, "Hey, you want to try a fried Oreo?" Of course, I want to try a fried Oreo. Let's see what we got. Okay. All right, so how are you doing? You take an Oreo and you put it in some pancake batter, oh, and then it'll look like that. Okay. You don't want it to drip too much. All right. Then you're gonna come over here to the fryer and put it in, and you let it cook pretty much until it's golden brown. Okay. That one just got, came out, so okay. these two have been cooling off. All right, y'all. Here's the fried Oreo. That's it right there. So I've actually never had this. It'll be my first time. You want a regular Oreo? Got the powdered sugar. It don't need it. <laughs> it, don't, no. it do, that is good. So I didn't expect this. I thought I was gonna bite into a fried Oreo. Like the Oreo would still be crunchy. No, it's soft in the mid. Like so, the whole Oreo turns soft. That's ridiculous, huh? Oh my goodness, that's trouble. That is trouble. Ooh. Okay, we got uh, a, so, boudin, so, a rice boudin stuffing. Wait, that, it's stuffed? Yes. Oh my goodness. So we got rice boudin stuffing. We've sewed the cavity back. Uh, it's a savory rub wrapped with uh, Louisiana Craft Butcher sugar cured bacon. And we've cooked it to uh, 165 degrees and we just got it in a warming oven right now ready for service. So, so it's done. It's just Yeah, it's just warm. waiting for people right now. You know, in, in Louisiana we have a prevalence of pecan wood. So most of the smoke uh, products that we do here are on pecan wood, and we're doing alligator on pecan wood. The shrimp will be going in just as soon as we get this out. The shrimp are going in, it's going to take about maybe three minutes. Wow, man, that is just beautiful. Coming up, just beautiful. The texture is beautiful. The color. Uh, okay, we're in. We're, Let's see what he thinks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's the spot. Oh, that's the spot. Slap your mama. <laughs> I don't believe you've ever had soup before. <laughs> you gonna try that? One? You wanna taste it? Five dollars right now. Can't do oh, it. It's, it's corn. It's that good, corn? young man. Five dollars. Smell it first. Five dollars. You can't do it. Okay. All right. A whole lot of ugly. A whole lot of ugly. Welcome to the great state of Louisiana, boys and girls. Hey, you want one, young man? Watch yeah, this. Try it. Are they hot? These are cooling off a little bit. They might be a little warm yet. Okay. Uh oh, what's the sauce? Ooh, special sauce. There you go, young man. All right, so this is the boudin bowl with the special sauce. This is from a wild boar. That's pretty dang good. Hey, good, good idea on the sauce. They're all pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Damn good. All right, so this is the first finished dish that we've tried so far. I'm already giving it two thumbs up. 
It must be good. So, props to the boudin ball, guys. Wish y'all the best. That was a pretty good man. Pretty good. So that was our first finished dish that we've tried, and that was pretty good. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, right there, my baby. That's the money. That's money, dude. Tail <laughs> cracker. Here's tail cracker when we need him. Read that other one out. There you go. Woo! Paul, Louisiana shrimp right there. That's where you get them. That's it, man. Put that on a cracker. Put that on a cracker. Stale cracker. Watch out, my boy. Watch out. All right, so this is pretty cool. They took a whole P-Rog, and they lined the table with the P-Rog, and they're going to have their fixings and their shrimp, and you'll just work your way on down, make you a plate. I like it. Presentation. Not bad. Job rolled oysters. We're getting it done. We can't tell you about that butter. A little butter, garlic, oregano, a little bit of seasoning, fresh parsley. Beautiful. Oh, there it is. There it is. You still get the smoke. All right, so this is not alligator sausage as advertised on the sign. I believe there was a miscommunication on the phone. We fixed our sign for you. Oh, you look fixed at our it. sign? So, we fixed it. So, so, said somewhere along the line, you know, these guys were always going to do alligator sauce pecan, but someone interpreted it as alligator sausage. Oh, it's killer. Who just eat this one, Jack? The governor himself is eating this dish right here. That's a good sauce pecan. I'd make it a little bit spicier, but you gotta realize there's people here from all around the country. If you make it too spicy, you know, you might lose some points. So I'm gonna give them credit for what they did there. But I like that they did right. The alligator's tender. It's easy to mess up alligator and make it too chewy, but they've got it just right. All right, that's yours. Go ahead. Don't thank you. All right, take it with you. All right, how is it? Good. Alright, so Jack likes the barbecue chicken, right? Alright, this is that shrimp bisque that I've been waiting on, the shrimp and corn bisque. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, it's just got that like seafoody corn, like, and his textures. I mean, look, look at that. Look at that. This is not something you would typically eat in the summertime. That's almost like you get in from a cold duck hunt and you want to eat that, but like, God, it's got so much flavor. All right, now this is the bite with the blackened shrimp. That, I've never had this before, you blacken the shrimp. Bro. Bro. Lights out. Alligator egg roll, and you know anything about me, I love an egg roll. All right, so that's the rice. Now the egg roll. missing something. I'll be honest. It's good. Very crunchy. Missing just a little something. The rice is actually really good. It looks like they put maybe even some alligator in the rice. Right now the boudin ball is the winner for me. Alright, so this is the jambalaya. We saw him cooking that. It's got pork. It's got chicken. He said they seasoned the meat for 24 hours. And then they served it with a hush puppy with honey on it. I mean, come on. Come on. You never go wrong with a hush puppy. Let's do what it's like with hush puppy and jambalaya. You gotta respect the dish as a whole. Like, whatever they serve with it, you have to count that too, not just like, you know, the main dish. As of now, I'm going jambalaya number two, good and ball number one. Let's keep going. All right, so it's the Ducks Unlimited National Convention. Not that many duck dishes, but here's one of them. This is the duck and andouille gumbo. This is actually prepared by the restaurant Luke, so they're kind of cheating. Like, that's one of the better restaurants in the city. 
but I, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it anyway. But they, they might not be able to actually qualify. Yeah, they can't. That, that's not fair. You can't count that, man. Lucas, that's a, it's a pretty dang good restaurant. Like that takes me back to like the 1800s, Louisiana. That's deep. That's got soul. That's got roots. Okra. Look at the okra. What? I don't even think they're probably in the competition. They're just here to represent, but very good. All right, so this one is probably my most hopeful one because I saw it being done and another guy owns a restaurant. This is that Oyster Rockefeller soup that we saw being made that we tested before the fried oyster was dropped in. But I mean, look at that. Just look at the beautiful color, the spinach. It's got bacon in it. It's got oysters in the soup and then a fried oyster in the middle. I need to just go right into like with the fried oyster. I mean, look at that. <laughs> hey, bro, life is hard out here on outside the levees and when you're rocking with Ducks Unlimited. I mean, look at what I got to do. That's number one. No doubt about it. We still have a few more to try, but for me, that's an easy number one. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Now here's something different. You don't even have to be from here to know that we normally boil all of our shrimp with the shell on. You boil the shrimp whole with the head, everything. Those guys, to save time for the folks eating the shrimp and to save time for the cooking, decided to boil it with no shell. Sometimes like we can get caught up in the way we've always done things and have a perception like, oh, well, you, you can't do it that way, you can't do it that way. With that being said, I have not ever tried it this way, so it might not be as good, I don't know. I'm trying for the first time boiled shrimp with no shell. I'm actually hopeful on it. Jack, you want to go first? Jack loves boiled shrimp. All right. Now, Jack only had the boudin ball and chicken so far. It's spicy? It's hot. Hot? It's been sitting up there. How would it be hot? Tastes like boiled shrimp to me. I think what's lacking is the experience of peeling boiled shrimp drinking a beer it's just too easy like this you know like you need to go through that process got a potato see that is that nostalgia like that's what I'm used to as soon as I've been into that potato that takes me back to my childhood but hey props to them for trying and as I mentioned before there's people here from all around the country even parts of Canada and they may not know how to peel shrimp so I don't blame them for doing that you know it is what it is I hear you. I hear you. It'll be good to go, boy. <laughs> now, the thing the alligator has going for it, number one, it's a spectacle. Like, it just looks amazing, right? Like, it's a full alligator. It smells amazing. It's been cooked with pecan wood. But I don't want to let that blind me to the fact that it could be too tough or too chewy which is sometimes what happens to alligator. Now, I met the dude who was doing the smoking. That dude knows what he's doing. So, let's just see for ourselves. Now, as I mentioned with the other dishes, if you just try one part of it and expect it to like speak for the whole thing, you may or may not get it. So they're serving it with jambalaya, so I'm gonna try it with a scoop of jambalaya. We got jambalaya, alligator, and sausage all together. Not chewy at all. That dude nailed it. Number... So still going with oyster soup, one. I'm gonna probably put this at two. Chris. Chris has got the alligator. Oh, that's phenomenal. Is it? It's pretty good. Get your piece of alligator. All right. That's the alligator you've been waiting on. What? Alright y'all, I know, like, I talk up Louisiana, right? Like, every time I'm on this channel, I'm talking about what we eat, what we do, what we hunt, what we fish. I'm a pretty good promoter of Louisiana. I'm about to get out done here. Go and introduce yourself, tell them who you are and what you do. I'm Billy Mangas, Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Louisiana, and my job is promoting tourism in Sportsman's Paradise, Louisiana. I can't beat that. <laughs> I can't beat that. Why come to Louisiana? Let me ask you this. So, so this is us, right? Like you come here, you see this, you see the food, you meet the people. We're right here on the river. I mean, the river speaks for who we are. What are we looking at? Well, when you get local, you know, Lafayette, Vermillion, Lafayette, 
cooking their special dish for people from all over the world, it's special. You can come to New Orleans for a convention, eat convention food, go eat at the nice restaurant. Here you get a bit, little taste of Louisiana from all over Louisiana in one night. You know, we tell people you can fish anywhere, you catch fish in Louisiana, and uh, but the food, the music, we are a sportsman's paradise, and uh, this is the best of it here tonight. I love y'all Florida, I love y'all Texas, no offense, but you can fish anywhere, you catch fish in Louisiana. Billy, Thank thanks you, for everything man. you do, my man. Appreciate you. Good to see you. Atlantic scallops and fresh yes. shrimp. Mexican peppers. Not overdone. What's that? Yeah. You have a few chips for that? Uh, yeah, I'll do tortilla chips. There. Then we'll get you the melon salad after. I've never had scallops of each though. Especially fresh from Canada scallops. I'm so partial to ceviche, it's hard to give it an honest... Like, I'd put this up because, all right, here's the problem with everything we've had so far, it's hot. Everything we've eaten, even if it was good, it's hot. Hot outside. Ceviche is cold. So automatically, it gets like an automatic boost bump up. That was probably the smartest dish on the day, with ceviche. It's hot outside. And refreshing margarita with it. What more could you ask for? And I didn't even get to Oh, Rita, baby. Rita, Rita makes it sing. See, by itself, it's doing all right. It's dancing, but Rita makes it sing. Ooh, with the salt. I don't know, y'all. It's hard to vote against the ceviche. Duck sauce for the number one duck sushi that we have at the cook-off. There we go. The best. This is the fried duck. Mine's got duck sauce. Jack's got no duck sauce. But... It's a little thin. Let me try a thicker piece. Yeah, better. The first piece I had was thin. I was like, it's like fried fish, but that's pretty good. All right, y'all, this is my last one for the day. This is the charbroiled oyster. Y'all saw that delicious sauce he was putting on it. I've had it like this before. Like, so in other words, they buy pre-shucked oysters and then they just put them in a tin or in a pan and do it that way. It's just as good in my opinion. You don't get the experience of like digging it out of the shell, but as far as eating an oyster goes, it's good and, and a little bit cleaner because you're going to eat pieces of shell. So this is my last one of the day. Right now, as it stands, I'm going number one, the oyster soup, the oyster Rockefeller soup. Number two, the jambalaya with the smoked alligator, which was phenomenal. Number three, the boudin ball. So let's see what the oyster does to that lineup. Goodbye, alligator jambalaya. <laughs> That's so good, dude. The, the only downside to this, you get one. I'm sure I could go back and get one or two more, but that's the, I guess that's the downside. But flavor taste-wise, hard to beat a char grilled oyster. So my number one that I'm going with was the Oyster Rockefeller Soup. Number two, the char grilled oyster. Number three, the smoked alligator and jambalaya. What can I say, y'all? Roadkill cook-off, Ducks Unlimited. That's it. All right, y'all, y'all saw it, the Roadkill cook-off. These boys about to hit the music. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please support everything Ducks Unlimited does, and we'll see y'all soon.